Hi gang! Recently we asked you what it was about other RVers that really grinds your gears and we got an earful. So let's roll that intro so we can get into it. we did get these responses from you, our audience. We have been using our community tab on our YouTube channel a lot more lately and it's been really fun to ask these type of questions and get all these answers back from you. So if you aren't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you might want to do that because once you subscribe, anything we post in our community tab should start popping up on your YouTube feed and that way you can participate in the fun as well. So don't forget to subscribe for future questions. We did get a ton of responses, but most of them fell into nine categories. We're going to be going over from the least complained about to the most complained about, so let's dive in. So I did take screenshots of all of these so we could review them, and the least talked about complaint, which I actually think is a good thing, is theft. So we only got one comment about theft in the campgrounds and it was actually kind of a funny story. I don't know if the user thought it was funny, but we did have a chuckle about um, a, a woman poking around and stealing flower pots from other people, which is not cool, but that imagery just kind of gave us a chuckle. Yeah. And we've never experienced theft. No, it was something that we really thought about when we hit the road. Um, and. You know, we try to lock everything up that we don't want to just walk off. Mm -hmm. But uh, something that we haven't locked up in a, quite a while is our surge protector. And that was mm. one thing that I was like really worried about that, that our expensive surge protector for our RV would, would walk off one day. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I think there was a lot of people talking about it on Facebook posts. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I want the new one that's built in, so I'm kind of hoping it'll walk off. What? Don't t people know our rig? They'll just take it then. <laughs> Jason wanted it to be stolen. <laughs> Number eight item was backing up. So I did have a good chuckle about this because someone said, or Hobby Farm Girl said, I hate it when everyone stops to watch you back in and set up your site when camping. Now, this comment did get a couple responses of other people saying, but it's free entertainment, <laughs> which I have to admit is true. We have been guilty ourselves of watching other people back up, but we have also been on the receiving end of that. And it, it, it can be uncomfortable, especially in, you know, your beginning years. So unless people are coming outside intentionally to watch you, you know, that's definitely something that's frustrating. But if they're already out grilling or just in front of their campfire or something, you can't really blame them for watching. I totally get the free entertainment part. The Moorland Adventure said, when the camp manager or others help you back in. So I can agree with this. Um, this is actually something that really irritated me in the beginning. Yep. And this comment got me thinking of how come people don't offer to help us back in anymore? And I think it's because we look a little more confident in the process. I think we yeah. looked so terrified before that people thought they were helping. And then I think yeah. that's a great thing. If you, I have no problem with people offering help, but I think the kicker is if they decline, then just accept the no and walk away. We've had people be very aggressive with wanting to help and it has not helped. Yeah, and I've always appreciated like another set of eyes, right? Like someone watching the front corner, just mm -hmm. standing there making sure I don't, like if I'm getting close to something, like telling me if I have more space or not. But mm -hmm. yeah, I I guess I don't really care about people watching us back up anymore. I've yeah. just gotten used to it, I guess. I've always <laughs> assumed people are watching and just don't care, but yeah. yeah, people butting in and trying to take Ray's job, like she does 80%. If someone wants to watch one of the corners that she can't see, yeah. I'm all for it, but don't don't tell me like how to move the trailer or stuff like yes. that. Yes, we have had people yeah. stand by the driver's side window and try and direct him when I'm yeah. on the phone with him or on the walkie-talkie with him trying to direct, direct him as well. So that is a tip though. If you do have someone who won't take no for an answer, give them a job and just say, go watch that tree for me or go watch this front corner for me. So that way they're, they're still helping, but they're not in your way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 
this one was funny. Our number seven item that people complained about was sewer. So I just categorized it as sewer, but the first comment we got was living our now and they said we can't stand it when we're at an RV park and people aren't using the seals for their stinky slinky drainage. Stuff happens, but we don't want to smell it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, you just get, <laughs> kind of get used to it. Uh, just get used to the sewer smell. I, I mean, it's it, if it comes and goes, like if it's yeah. just constant, no way. That would be absolutely disgusting. Mm -hmm. But some of the things with a lot of older RV parks is like their drainage doesn't work as well or they've mm -hmm. implemented like vent stacks. Mm -hmm. The park we were at last week actually had like a vent stack like right outside in our site. It was like every three sites and we just happened to be one that it was like sticking out of the ground and mm -hmm. it's just a big pipe and so when anyone dumped like within six sites of us like the air pressure mm -hmm. went out that vent stack and so it was disgusting yeah definitely not pleasant <laughs> and then amanda said i hate it when people use the water spigot to rinse out their stinky slinky uh. oh my goodness i cannot agree with this yeah. one more and i feel like not enough people talk about this because maybe you haven't seen it but we have seen people dr take their sewer hose not a hose just take it stick it directly under the water spigot and rinse out their stinky slinky and it is disgusting and this is the exact reason why we have a bottle of Lysol in our wet bay and we spray the water spigot in every new campground even boondocking you know if we're going into town to get water we spray that water spigot too just in case yeah this is one of my most hated things when I see someone doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's a completely different thing if you're at the dump station and you're using the dump station like non-potable right, water hose right. or like we have a non-potable water hose that we use for flushing our black tank only. And mm -hmm. so if I do need to clean out our, our sewer hose, it'll be, I'll use that and like, mm -hmm. but I, I still don't even have to stick it in. I still try not to touch the sewer but actually using the potable water faucet that someone else is gonna, like you're gonna leave and someone else is gonna come and just hook Connect right up to it. fresh water to that? Oh man. Yeah. It's like it's kissing yucky. a butt. You know, kissing someone else's butt. That's exactly what it is. Yes, exactly. And just to add on top of that, we have also seen animals go up and lick the water spigot if it's <laughs> dripping or anything like that. So yep. trust us when we say you should just sanitize your water spigot for sure. All right, this next item I can agree with, but I don't think we've had too, too many issues with it, but it is smoke or smokers. So Joy said, um, exterior lights that's another one but a lot of people complained about that one and she said and cigarette smoke and then colorado couple said smokers smoking around our camper as the smell penetrates our rig we can't stand the butts they leave all over the campsite either and then you know they told us a personal story about trying to move because they were surrounded by smokers and they couldn't avoid it so that is unfortunate and i don't know i go back and forth on this because if you can't smoke outside and a campground doesn't have rules against it, you can't really stop someone. But I 100% agree with cigarette butts. Even this campground we're in, I didn't even tell you, but I picked up about 15 butts when we first got here. It's That is a big pet peeve. Cigarette butts are trash, people, and they should be put in a trash can, not your fire pit and not on the ground. So yeah. I think everyone should uh like start transitioning over to vaping right no smell <laughs> like yeah because the cigarette well, smells just so gross so if you want to get your nicotine <laughs> i recommend looking into vaping mm. what? okay that people need nicotine still you know i'm not going to tell you to quit getting nicotine just choose some other ways to get it yeah yeah or, you know, maybe just walk away from the sure. people. I don't know, it's hard yeah. to judge on this one. And then number five is walking through your site. So meaning campers walking through your site. And I agree with this one. I don't know why it's still one of the ones to this day that irritates me. It's irritated <laughs> us since day one. And I feel like when we first hit the road, the first couple of campsites we went to, it happened a lot. And then for a year and a half, almost two years, it didn't really happen. 
but then this last year with so many new RVers or rental, like people renting mm -hmm. RVs and just don't know the etiquette mm -hmm. rules, I guess, mm -hmm. I feel like I've noticed it happening a lot more. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So hopefully if any of you newbies are watching this, you know, don't take it as a huge negative, but if you are walking through other people's sites, maybe stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think in my mind, my mentality around it is, I have paid for this campsite, I get this very small area, and it's mine. <laughs> that might be a really selfish attitude, but that's my attitude, and I think a lot of people have that. And it's also just, you wouldn't want someone walking through your backyard or, yeah, and it's also like a weird thing in Los Angeles, everyone fences their property. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've traveled across the country and we've realized that there's a lot of places that don't put up fences along your property lines. Mm -hmm. And um, we think that's weird. So we want to know down in the comments, if you don't have like a fence in your property or where you lived, do people just walk through your backyards yeah. there? Is that like considered common space or... That's just want to know question. yeah it's i've always wanted to know yeah i've always wondered what do you do with your dog too yeah. i mean i get you can train them to stick around but not all dogs are like that so yeah let us know yeah all right so then number four we're getting closer to the top here is leaving lights on so this is other campers leaving their lights on so we got you know a handful of comments on this one like Flyer Mark said bright lights left on all night and Joy said other campers leaving their exterior lights on all night and the Crafty Voyager said when it's a tight park and your neighbor goes to bed with their spotlight on that shines right in your window. We have definitely had that. And then Jay said when another RVer has obnoxious blinking color changing LED lights around their rig and they leave them on all night long. So light pollution is, yeah. I think, a big issue. Although I'm not bothered by this. Does yeah. this bother you? Um, it doesn't bother me, but it's because we have like blackout curtains and so it, yeah. it, we don't really pay attention to it. Maybe if it was but, our neighbor. Or maybe if know, it was- I totally get it shining uh, yeah. in your window. Well, and I, I get it when like they're across from us, yeah, and it's like shining on our rig. It's kind of like yeah. you go outside and you're like blinded in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't, it's kind of like a why thing. We've turned on like our front cap lights for occasionally, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. But it, it's not, if you're not out there like using it or like you're not hanging out outside, it's kind of yeah. like what, why? I get it that it look, kind of look, looks cool, but if you're sleeping, yeah. I don't know, like turn it off at like 11 or so, something when you're going to bed. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I yeah. think that's a good middle ground. Yeah. Definitely. And then number three is being loud. So, I mean, of course, a lot of people have issues with folks being loud in a campground or, you know, playing their music very loud or getting a little tipsy and just <laughs> yelling and laughing and then I wanted to read this story from the Brazen Brits because it made us chuckle. One time we were next to a couple who had Bluetooth on their phone to the sound receiver inside the rig. Then they spent the entire day and evening sat outside playing games on their phone with the sound routed to their outside speakers. Like full on candy crush noises for eight hours a day for four days. That is insane. <laughs> I just, I, I truly don't understand that. That is definitely, just like there's light pollution, there's yeah. noise pollution too. Yeah. And we've been on the bad side of this, but unintentionally. Yes. We've definitely, if we've like reset the DC power mm -hmm. to our rig, or if I was working on it for some reason and pulled like the fuses, our stereo defaults to all the channels yes. so living room bedroom and outside and so we've been here watching movies like game of thrones or something and it's just been blaring outside and the only reason we find out is because we like take carmen outside and i'm like yeah. oh my i'm mortified yes yes i actually wish more people would tell other people that they left their speakers on because i think this happens accidentally 
much more than intentionally. Yeah. So I would be so thankful if someone came and knocked on our door and said, hey, your outside speakers are on and I can hear you watching, you know, whatever movie. <laughs> Instead of embarrassingly figuring it out the <laughs> just, next day. Just wondering who's heard it and was judging us. Yeah. All right. So number two is kind of combined, but we had a lot of people complain about having your dog off leash and people not picking up after their pets which I wholeheartedly agree with. Yeah. I absolutely hate it when someone has their dog off leash. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, we let Carmen off leash when we're boondocking with friends or by ourselves, but that's, that's still, I'm almost embarrassed to admit that because someone's still gonna be like, you shouldn't do that. And we always advise people when they're boondocking to keep their dog on leash as well, but we don't do it 100%, 100% yeah. of the time when we're boondocking. Unless yeah. you can see an, the other boondockers, then we'll kind of keep her leashed. But if we're out there in the middle of nowhere, yeah. we'll let her off. Yeah, that is a, a big thing. Even the campground we're at now, it's kind of like more space between sites. And there's a ton of dog poop just like covered in sand all over the place. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. <laughs> it's frustrating. Yeah. I yeah. don't understand. I truly don't understand why people don't pick up after their pet because... It's just part of the responsibility of owning a pet. Yeah. I, I like if you don't want to pick up poop, don't get an animal. <laughs> Absolutely. And that <laughs> does remind me another thing about the, the leash side of it is your dog may be friendly and may be able to be off a leash, but not all dogs are. So maybe a dog owner has their dog leashed and it's not friendly. If yours is very friendly, like Carmen is, and she's off leash, she's gonna run up and try to play with another dog when she sees it, and that dog may not be friendly. Mm hmm And I wanted to highlight this comment specifically. So Judy said, we truly hate it when people leave their dogs behind in the camper. Poor things get anxious and continuously bark. Our suggestion would be to do a quick trial trip, leave your pooch behind, and have a friend listen outside for any barking. I think most owners are unaware their dog barks for hours on end when they're gone. I wholeheartedly agree with this. We have had a few RVs next to us where the dog just barks the whole time and I truly think that these people are either not aware or just don't care. This is something we tell new RVers because a common question we get is I'm nervous, I'm nervous about leaving my dog and if you already know your dog's a barker or a scratcher or a destroyer, being in an RV isn't gonna change any of that. It actually might make it worse. So we have a lot of people asking these types of questions of what do we do? And I realized we got very lucky because Carmen is really chill and she was crate trained before we left and then she was house trained before we left. So she just sleeps while we're gone. We don't have an issue with her destroying stuff or freaking out she's very good by herself but yeah so if you are curious about living in an RV and curious about how your dog is going to react I definitely recommend Judy's suggestion of leaving you can either put up cameras or having a friend report back to you yeah you know? or creating uh, if your dog is a barker then uh, look into crate training them mm -hmm. crates aren't bad places unless you make them bad places. Right. They're, uh, it can be a safe little, space. Yeah, they're yeah. a little home, a little den. So you can just get a regular crate, maybe you can cover it, make it just a nice sleeping place for your dog to mm -hmm. be comfortable and happy. Yes, absolutely. So now are you ready for number one? All right. <laughs> oh, <are> you gonna... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I just threw this in the category of etiquette <laughs> because a lot of the posts that fell into this one was everything that kind of it it didn't quite fit into what we previously talked about and then it just came to trash or respecting others or cleaning up after yourself yeah. so it's just a very general etiquette category so a couple of the basic etiquette things we're talking about are Things like putting trash in the fire pit. Uh, someone mentioned that someone put one of those green propane bottles in the fire pit and then it was like covered. So 
It exploded. It exploded. Yeah. yeah that's, and that's hurt a child the that's next crazy. time. Crazy. And then yeah. other people talk about moving fire pits, uh, which also I agree with because then you'll go someplace and you'll have like a pile of trash mm -hmm. and like nails and stuff like from people mm -hmm. burning pallets and then you'll have the other fire pit over here and mm -hmm. so it's like you're just creating multiple piles of trash yeah this was really just picking up after yourself throwing your own trash away picking up after your pets and <sighs> people just got pretty heated about different topics which was very fun to read. <laughs> yeah, and if you're interested and a new RVer and interested in learning more about uh, RV etiquette, we do have a video about that. Mm -hmm. So you can watch that, it'll be up here or up here. Yes, definitely. And then I did wanna end the video on a positive note. So we did have two folks comment and said, I just hate it that I'm not living it yet. So Bill said that, said hope to meet you on the road someday. And then John said the worst part about RVing is the end of the trip when we have to return home, which is why we're going full time next year. So we wanted to just throw those comments up here and say congratulations to John for going full time next year. That is a very exciting. And then Bill, we hope that you are able to get out there and hit the road sooner rather than later as well. So thank you to everyone that submitted answers to this post. It was very fun to read through and we love sharing these responses with you guys as well. If you liked this video, please let us know. And if you have anything else to add, please let us know in the comments as well. We just ask that people keep it civil. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join our getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Oh my god. Hey guys. <laughs> she has one eye closed. <laughs> There's a hole in the bottom of the bed and she can see the, <laughs> the stuffing. The stuffing. Don't even so think show about it. <laughs> people are coming outside to Carmen can you chill I wish I fell on the ground <laughs> I'm bored should I start over just in case sure wait all the way from the no, top no. okay no. Jesus <laughs> so we have had a few RVs next to us <clears throat> excuse me